Hey Church, welcome to today's devotion. My name's Anna, I'm from the Chester campus. It's my absolute privilege to be able to be with you today to share what God is speaking to me about at the moment. This Sunday was Mission Sunday, how exciting is that? And as part of one of the mission teams this year, it is my privilege to be able to share some of my experience and thoughts with you today. Um, I just wanted to start by sharing a verse from the Bible with you. It's Psalm 126, verse 6. It says this, Those who go out weeping, carrying seeds to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with them. I love the message version of this as well, which says, And now, God, do it again. Bring rains to our drought-stricken lives. To those who planted their crops in despair, will shout hurrahs at the harvest. So those who went off with heavy hearts will come home laughing with armloads of blessing. In May this year, I had, as I say, I had the privilege of being part of one of the Audacious Missions team and I was able to go to Rwanda in Central Africa. Um, one of the practical jobs we were doing in Chabatanzi village, just outside of the capital Kigali, was to help make repairs on a widow's house. Our job as team was to go and fetch the sand and the rocks that were needed to make these repairs. Now, Rwanda is a hilly country and the piles of sand and rocks were at the top of quite a steep hill and the widow's house was nearer the bottom of the hill. So our job was armed with hessian sacks. We had to trek up the hill fill the hessian sand complete with holes and load a couple of stones into the other hand, swing the bag of sand over our shoulder and trek back down the hill to dump our load at the widow's house that we were making repairs on. We did this for a number of hours until it was completed. We moved over a ton of sand between us um, and the path was uneven. We walked through rough fields of stubble crops. Um, I, did I mention it was uphill? Yeah, there was a lot of uphill. You know what? We dug deep. The sweat was unreal. Um, and I'm not sure I've uttered as many Bible verses under my breath as I did at that time. The villagers would pass by us and shout Himbarga, which means strength. And uh, just compared to some of the loads that these villagers were carrying, these women, quite often older women, perhaps carrying bags of sand upon their heads. It was quite inspirational working alongside them. Even the little children uh, were running past us, running rings around us, carrying their own loads as they helped as well. It was pretty hard work. It was manual work, but the joy and the jubilation that we experienced on completing was just huge. And true Rwandan style, there was singing and dancing and rejoicing and praising God when we finished this hard work. Going back to that verse, just the way that we would take these heavy bags of sand and sling them over our shoulder, it just gave me an image with this verse of carrying a sack of seed on our shoulder and trudging under the heavy load and with heavy hearts to the field to, for it to be sown. It's quite a strong image, but it got me asking the question, what sort of things are we carrying? What does this seed represent in our lives? You might want to spend some time praying about it, asking God, to reveal what it is this seed represents. What is it that you're carrying? For example, maybe you're carrying resentment, maybe hurt, maybe you're grieving. Perhaps you've suffered a broken relationship or lost a job. Perhaps you're fearful. Perhaps you're struggling with anxious thoughts maybe about finances or your health. Maybe you're carrying the responsibility of loved ones or of a promise that you're waiting to be fulfilled. 
We all carry things and the weight of that seed is heavy and it often comes, doesn't it, with a heavy heart and perhaps even weeping. However, this verse, thankfully, does not end there. The verse finishes with hope and joy. What happens to the seed that is carried, it's not still being carried in the sack on returning from the field. No, the verse says they will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with them. They are carrying armfuls of the harvest. What do we need to do with the seed? Well, the seed needs sowing. It needs to be buried. It needs to go into the soil. It needs to be released from your hand. God does not want you carrying seed. His desire is for you to bring home the harvest, the harvest of blessing. You see, the seed only has so much potential in our hands. It only is ever a bag of seed. It may be ground to make a couple of loaves of bread, for example. However, if we sow it into a field, it can supernaturally become so much more. The field of harvest that is reaped contains, contains so much more seed than what was sown. You see, each seed produces a plant and each plant contains considerably more seed. It's a supernatural multiplication. However, this sowing and growth requires of us a faith journey. We need to trust him that what we carry and what we surrender to him, he will use it for his plan and purpose. A bit like the sun and the rain, that's what it needs for, the crop needs for, for growth. And the same in our lives, we need to trust that God brings that sunlight and that rain on the seed that we carry, the seed that we sow into the ground. There is a group of women in this Chabatanzi village in Rwanda. They're called the Wizagara women. And prior to this trip, I've been hearing about how the women have been preparing the ground ready for a crop of sorghum to be sown into it. It was backbreaking work. And a lot of these women are older women. They sowed the seed into the ground and they may have had concerns. They may have had anxious thoughts about what would happen. Will the rains come? Will it be healthy enough to grow? However, they trusted God that he would allow the rain and the sun to grow their crop. This crop is so important to them for food, for finance, and to feed their animals. These Wizagar women have been through a lot. They are all widows, and they've all lost their husbands, either in the genocide or to ill health since. Some of them have even lost children. Yet their testimony of faith is just extraordinary. The joy that they carry is clearly evident through the smiles on their faces. Their praise to God is inspirational. They have experienced God's faithfulness over and over again. They trust God with their sack of seed, both literal and metaphorical, and he's not failed them. So what seed are you carrying? What is it that he's asking you to sow into the ground? What weight have you been shouldering? It's time to trust him with it. What you've been carrying needs to be released. God doesn't want you to be heavy hearted, walking around, weeping in your heart. He wants you to live life and live it to the full. He longs to see you singing songs of joy, carrying massive blessing. Perhaps you're feeling the weight of responsibility of what you're carrying, the gift or the dream that he's given you. Remember, your sack of seed is in your hands is only ever worth a sack of seed. By giving the control back to him, he can multiply it supernaturally. I carried a weight of responsibility of a calling for over 20 years. When I was 15 years old, I was called by God to be an overseas missionary. My heart was broken for Africa, and I knew God wanted me to be a vet, caring for the farm, farm animals in rural Africa. These animals are a critically important source of food and finance. 
every year that went by, I wondered when this dream he'd given me would be realised. I learned I had to continually surrender it to him, to trust that his timing and his plan far exceeded mine. I could have gone about things my own way, but I knew that by trusting him and surrendering it to him, that he would use the seed in ways to supernaturally multiply anything that I could dream up on my own. I'm still surrendering it and offering it up to him to use me for all that I am, for all his plan and purpose. I'm believing he will continue to this work that he's begun in me and bring it to completion. What happens when together we sow our seed? We find freedom. We reap a harvest of abundant blessing. Imagine what happens to our kingdom work when we, as in Hebrews, it says, throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and run with perseverance the race marked out for us. It's a game changer, right? And we can do it all in freedom with songs of joy. I encourage you to do two things today. Firstly, I encourage you to spend time asking the Holy Spirit to help you identify and name the things you are carrying. Ask God what it is you need to surrender to him. And secondly, I want to encourage you to prayerfully consider joining a mission team next year. Whether it's overseas or closer to home, God will do incredible things in and through you. Perhaps there's a longing inside of you to do something. Perhaps this is a seed that you're carrying and you need to take a step of faith and place it in the ground. Pray about it. Give it to him and see what he wants to do. Let's pray together now. Father, I thank you for that verse that reminds us that you want to take the things that are burdening us and replace it with armloads of blessing, carried with songs of joy. Lord, help us to recognise those things and offer them up to you. God, I pray today for people to live in the freedom that you have won for them and for joyful hearts. Father, please prompt hearts today with a desire to serve you on mission and that you would be glorified in all that we do. Amen. It's great to be with you today. I hope you have a good rest of the day.